What the heck just happened in this Super Bowl game? The Eagles just beat the Patriots. Um, everybody's happy that Tom Brady finally lost. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to discuss what happened in Super Bowl 52, my quick reaction to the game, all the commotion that happened around it, and we're starting right now. What's up, everybody? It's Aaron Duncan here with the Necessary Blunt the Sports Talk. It's a channel we might not tell you what you want to hear, but we're definitely going to tell you what you need to hear. Hold on. Matter of fact, just stop right now. I'm going to start with the usual routine. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button below right now. Um, we're going to give you a bunch of videos. The off season's coming up. I'm going to keep you guys fed about what's going down in this free agency and the draft. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button now. Don't even waste any time before we get into it. But this is your first time here on this channel. I'll give you the best analysis and the coverage of the best division in the nfl the nfc south and the rest of the nfl all around so like i said go ahead and subscribe button below give this video a thumbs up real quick guys let me know what you thought about the super bowl in the comments what do you think about the commercials the halftime performance do you think this is one of the better super bowls we've seen in a while uh, what do you think is going on guys what do you think were you shocked about the patriots losing let me know what you think guys moment of silence for the end of football season it's over guys moment of silence all right, now that that's over, uh, we can go ahead and let the tears out. We got six months until training camp starts. We got to suffer through this whack NBA season. But it was a great ending to the season. I can't ask for anything more. It was a great game, Super Bowl. Uh, it was a shootout, had everything, had controversial calls. Pretty decent halftime performance, I'd say. A, good, a shootout, it was plenty of points. Uh, defense is definitely optional in the game. So you can't really ask for uh, too much of a cherry on top to this crazy NFL season that has happened. If I told you that Tom Brady was gonna throw for 500 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, and the Patriots wouldn't punt at all the whole game, what would you think happened in that game? I'll answer it for you. You probably think the Patriots would have won in a landslide. But this is the NFL and anything can happen and things like Nick Foles throwing for 373 yards and becoming the NFL, I mean the Super Bowl MVP, happens this is the nfl crazy stuff happens every time that's why we can't stop watching as much as you guys think is rigged or whatever we can't stop watching because you never know what's gonna happen there was one point and one sack between both teams it happened the sack just happened to come on the key drive that they needed the most i think we all thought that when the Eagles scored that they scored too quick there was two minutes 21 seconds left the patriots had one timeout and a two-minute warning this is tom brady we saw him do this for the past 18 years you leave too much time on the clock guys like him and aaron Rodgers are gonna make you pay every time i think we thought it was a full god conclusion i know i did i thought it was a full god conclusion that they were gonna win this game but that wasn't the case but i still can't believe that nick Foles got mvp i still think this guy is garbage to me you can call him what he want you can say he's gonna be good trade bait for the eagles carson wentz comes back you can think blah 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 but keep in mind let's let's remember they traded nick Foles one time before to the Rams, and he played nine games, had seven touchdowns and 10 picks, and got released the next year and benched for Case Keenum. It looks like a pretty decent deal now, and he was the reason why they ended up drafting Jared Goff. So let's not act like this guy is just the second coming of Jesus Christ. If he played two great games and had the Falcons not let that interception bounce off their knees before halftime when they played them in the world, we'd probably be having a different song right now, and the Eagles may not be where they were. So let's pump the brakes on the Nick Foles for quarterback, president, whatever you want to call him in next year's offseason. So let's pump the brakes. Anyway, he's under contract. So we'll see what happens with that situation. I'm pretty sure if Carson Wentz heals uh, 100% like we think he will be, he's going to be a starting quarterback. He was an MVP candidate, if not the guarantee MVP, had he stayed healthy. I got to give the MVP to Doug Peterson. This guy is, <laughs> he's got some big balls on him, man. He came out slinging that thing with a mediocre quarterback. He went for it on fourth down multiple times. He had pretty much pretty much 100% confidence in this quarterback, and he didn't blink on making some of these calls. He looked like he, for a second-year coach, well, first, second-year coach, he looked like he had definitely been there before. You got to give your hats off to this guy. He did his thing out there, man. He didn't miss a beat with Nick, uh, with, uh, Carson Wentz. keeps on to say Nick Foles. With Carson Wentz being out, he didn't miss a beat. The defense Helped a lot, definitely. They didn't help this game, but he made the calls in the right position. He knew that his defense wasn't making the stops that he needed to, so he had to be aggressive offensively no matter who he had at quarterback. But let's not let 
the opposing coach off the hook. Bill Pelichick, I'm talking about you. You pissed me off this game. Some of these things that you make, I mean, I get it. You might be the GOAT, the greatest coach of all time. You get all these rings. You're so cerebral. You're supposed to be well thought out than everybody. But sometimes you outthink yourself. You mean to tell me Malcolm Butler, the guy that made the game-saving interception against the Seahawks a few years ago, doesn't play an offensive snap at all. He wasn't hurt. He wasn't sick or whatever they tried to say he was. He just didn't play. And he clearly admitted that at the game that he was pissed, that the coaches made a decision that he didn't play. He played 98%. I read a stat that he read. He played 98% of the snaps during the regular season. And he doesn't play a snap in the Super Bowl. And you get torched by a scrub quarterback for 373 yards. That's on you, Bill Belichick. This blood is on your hands. And I'm putting it on you. Somebody got to call him out. And I'm going to do it because this is a necessary bluntness sports talk. We don't shy away from anything, man. So let me know what you think about the game in the comments below. I'm out.